float plane flies over mountains and a river. Fred, these trilobite fossils are really going to make our ancient seas exhibit. Million to one shot, those oil prospectors turning up a find like this. And JL knowing what they were. You forget, George, I majored in geology. <laughs> well, gentlemen, we're about halfway home. A blast of fire and smoke shoots out of the front of the plane. Smoke pours from the plane and it veers wildly. plane turns down into a nosedive. Dr. Grant Roberts drives an open Vancouver Aquarium Jeep across a bridge into the city. At the aquarium, he sets an otter pup on a laboratory bench. Danger Bay, with narrative description by the Accessible Channel. Grant pilots a Vancouver Aquarium motor cruiser across the bay. Starring Donnelly Rhodes as Grant Doc Roberts. A float plane passes Grant's boat as it takes off from the bay. Susan Walden as J.L. Duval. Piloting a harbor air chopper, J.L. lifts off from a helipad. At the aquarium, a killer whale jumps high out of a pool. Also starring Christopher Crabbe as Jonah. And Ocean Hellman as Nicole. With Michelle B. Chan as Dr. Donna Chen and Hagen Beggs as Dr. George Dunbar. The kids spray Grant with a garden hose, and he shakes his head as he hugs them both. The float plane levels and continues to fly low over the trees, smoke still billowing out. The plane begins to descend. Grant worries while JL concentrates on maneuvering the plane. The plane bends and weaves precariously. Grant glances back at Dunbar. The plane skims the trees. It sputters towards the lake. Mayday, mayday. Guest star, Graham Campbell. Written by Roy Earl. The plane nearly hits a hillside and JL pulls up on the throttle. It rocks as it gets lower, still leaving a trail of smoke. It slams down on the water and bounces. Dunbar hits his head and Grant grimaces in pain. The plane touches down again as JL determinedly tries to slow it down on the water. <sighs> Directed by Alan Simmons. Whoa. The plane glides to a pebbly shore. The propeller slows, dark smoke streaming out behind it. The smoke clears as JL breathes a sigh of relief. She and Grant share a look. JL glances back at an unconscious Dunbar. Is George all right? He's out. Are you all right? I broke my arm, I think. JL reaches for something on the instrument panel. Radio's dead. She flicks a switch above her head. All right, I've got the ELT switched on. How bad's your arm? Can you help me get George out? I think so. JL nods. That was pretty super flying, JL. Thanks. The plane rests peacefully, smoke-free, on the submerged shoreline pebbles. At the Roberts' house, Grace Dunbar, Jonah, and Nicole prepare food in the kitchen. They better not be too late. This is ready for the oven. 
Maybe they ran into some bad weather. Had to fly around a bit? Grace shakes her head. Well, not a chance. Dad would have run you in. <laughs> They're probably sitting around drooling over their fossils. <laughs> I've never seen Grant and George as excited after JL radioed them about her find. <laughs> At a search and rescue station, workers walk through a hangar full of rescue planes. In a room nearby, other workers man the busy phones. Sir, we have RCC on the line. They have an ELT hit. They need to buffalo. Get it on the chart, Corporal. I'll call the crew. In the station locker room... Did you hear the news? The rookie's wife is a full-fledged MP sergeant now. She really gets the full rank now, eh? <laughs> now you're really gonna have to pull the line. Come on, you guys. Sartex, Kerr here. We've got an ELT on the mainland. Briefing in two minutes. We've got a rough position yet, sir. At the shoreline... Give me your arm. Dunbar lies unconscious, his head wrapped in a bandage. Thank God the pressure bandage stopped his bleeding. JL splints Grant's arm. I'm worried, Doc. His breathing's okay, and his temperature's fine. But he's got no reflex responses at all. Concussion? I hope that's all it is. Could be worse, possibly a skull fracture. Sure hope search and rescue picks up the signal off that satellite. You got any idea what happened, JL? Well, from what I could see, it looked like maybe the oil pump. She glances off into space. Can you fix it? JL? What? I don't know. How's that feeling? Oh, I'll live. In a briefing room. There's a number of small lakes in that area. Let's hope they got down into one of them. There's been no radio transmission, but the ELT is coming in strong. Do we have a Met report yet, sir? Nasty. There's a high pressure front moving through the search area. Storms to the northeast. The worker glances over at Kerr. Back at the house, Nicole, Jonah, and Grace stare at each other over the waiting table full of food. I'm gonna call Kerr. Nicole nods. Who? Sergeant Kerr. He's a friend of ours and a search and rescue technician, a Sartec at Comox. At the Sartec station. I repeat, position 5025N12240W. Any questions? Do we have a Robert for you, sir? Kerr takes the phone from a technician. Hi, Jonah. Hi. I can't talk now. I'm in the middle of a. Fort Air was flying into Prince George, and they're four hours overdue. I just wondered if there was a report on a plane down in that area. Hang on, Jonah. Sorry to interrupt, sir, but it sounds like Doc Roberts is on that plane. Jonah, listen. There's a plane down in that area, and we're only a few minutes away from launch. You and Nicole try not to worry. I'll call you back soon. OK, thanks. Nicole and Grace look at Jonah expectantly. Um, Kerr says there's a plane down on their possible flight path. Nicole lowers her eyes sadly and stands. Jonah, they haven't radioed. Don't worry. The Sartex know where to search. The radio may just be out. She turns to Grace. What if they've crashed? Grace gets up. Oh, you, you listen to me, both of you. We're not going to help anything by going to pieces. She puts her arms around the kids. Oh, come on, all sit down. We'll have our dinner, and we'll wait for word. I'm sure the Sartex will find them. Nicole and Jonah stare at their empty plates. Jonah slowly reaches for Nicole's hand, and she grasps his. A Sartex helicopter and plane take off from the station. Kerr and a tech are suited up inside. At the crash site, JL fashions a tent by tying a tarp across some trees. Well, that's about as good as we're gonna get it. Hey, that's great, JL. Not a drop coming in. How'd you learn that? I've taken every survival course ever offered. Guess I always dreaded something like this happening. They look up at the sound. That sounds like a buffalo. They walk to the shore and shield their eyes from the pouring rain, straining to see the plane. In the buffalo, a tech indicates a gauge on the control panel. We're getting close now. 
Kerr turns around from the cockpit. DOT indicates they're around here somewhere, but we can't spot anything in the suit. Uh, it's getting worse, Kerr. Night's coming on. I don't think we can stay on station here much longer. Sartek 1, Buffalo to Chopper. We're heading back to the base until this weather lifts. The chopper changes course. Grant and JL watch as it flies past them, then look at each other. <sighs> JL sadly turns and walks back to the shelter of the tent. With a last glance at the sky, Grant follows her. Back at the Roberts' house, Jonah and Nicole are asleep in the living room. In the kitchen, Grace dries the dishes. She begins to shake with emotion and drops the plate she's holding. Nicole jerks awake. She looks at Jonah, who has also been awoken. Grace puts her hand to head, then leans on the counter. The kids race in. Hey, Grace, what happened? Oh, no. Dad? No, no. The rescue people called. They had to turn back. The weather will... They'll go out again. As soon as the storm's cleared. The three of them embrace as lightning flashes outside. At the crash site, Grant checks on a still unconscious Dunbar. He makes his way over to JL, who is working on float plane parts by a fire. Still no change? Well, he's resting peacefully. No temperature, but I'd feel a lot better if he'd come too. JL looks over at Grant. You worried about the kids? Grant nods. And Grace. I wish we could have got off a message to let them know we were still alive. They won't give up hope, Grant. When my husband Tom went down, I kept on hoping. Until they called and said he hadn't made it. I'm sorry. They never found out what exactly happened, but uh, his engine went on him. Only he didn't make it over the mountain. I guess it was quick. I pray it was. He was a great pilot. She bites her lower lip. Just like you. Oh, no, he was much better than me. You'd have liked him. He was a very professional guy. He used to say, there are old pilots and there are bold pilots. But there are no old, bold pilots. He would have been proud of you today. Grant, I don't know if I can get back in that cockpit again. JL. I mean it, Grant. I have been thinking about it. It scares me to death. He puts his arm around her, and they lean towards each other and rest their foreheads together. Meanwhile, Kerr watches the rain out a window. He turns and walks past some techs playing backgammon, going over paperwork, and relaxing on a bench. At the house, Nicole covers a sleeping Grace with a blanket. In the kitchen, she approaches Jonah, who is stirring a pot on the stove. How's she doing? She's asleep. Suppose they don't find them. Suppose they've crashed and up. I don't want to think like that. Do you remember when we lost Mom? She smiles weakly at him. He returns her smile and they hug. The lights go out. What is it? 
set. The storm must have knocked down our power lines. Light the candles. The next morning at the Sartex station, the team heads to the Buffalo to continue their search. At the crash site, Grant checks on Dunbar. JL stirs and wakes up. Hi. Did you get much sleep? Not a lot. How's George? He's okay, but we gotta get him out of here. I guess I better get started fixing that oil pump. I'll see about some breakfast. Okay. JL gets up and Grant watches her step quickly over to the plane. The Buffalo flies toward the crash site. Keep a sharp eye, man. The OT in the case we should be right over them. JL works on the seaplane. How's it going? Getting there. Well, one Robert special coming up. Uh-oh. I've heard about your cooking. Thank you. Finished. You got it fixed? Hope so. They look up at the sound. JL smiles. That's a buffalo. Grant and JL watch as two techs jump from the buffalo, their orange and white parachutes unfurling above them. That's the most beautiful sight I've ever seen. The techs float towards the ground. Orange and yellow guidance streamers land on the water nearby. One tech lands on shore and unhooks his parachute. The other splashes into the shallow water. That looks like Kerr. Kerr gets out of his orange parachute and life vest. Grant and JL run over to him. Grant cradling his broken arm. Dr. Roberts, I presume. Kerr, I never <laughs> thought anybody with a face like yours could look so good. <laughs> This is J.L. Duval. Ah, pleased to meet you. Hi. In one piece. Yes, thank you, Kerr. This is Clark. Hi. Hi, Good Clark. Day. Thank you. What's the situation, Doc? We got George Dunbar in there. He took a hit on the head, and he has been out since we've been down. Ground the mother. We've got one orange, one blue, one green. We'll need the chopper. Listen, Kerr, is there any way you can get a phone call through to my family? The message went out the minute you were spotted. Thanks. Grant notices that J.L. has stopped walking. Leaving her alone, deep in thought, he follows the text. She stares at her plane, then looks out at the water. The Sartek chopper flies toward the crash site. Clark and two other Sartex carry Dunbar strapped onto a stretcher towards the approaching helicopter. They set him down and motion to the chopper. Grant and JL look on. A cable is lowered from the chopper. One of the Sartex grabs it and attaches it to the stretcher.
temperature is lifted towards the chopper. Two techs belay the cable, steadying the stretcher. The stretcher is pulled into the chopper. In the chopper, the techs tend to Dunbar. Where are we? You've been rescued, sir. Rescued? Does your head hurt? My head? I can't move. I'm paralyzed. No, sir, you're just strapped in. We're gonna take you straight to the hospital. On the ground. Okay, Doc, you're next. Grant and JL look at each other, and she walks away. I need a minute, John. Kerr nods. Grant goes to JL and puts a hand on her shoulder. You can do it. Grant, I don't know. Yes, you can. You can do it. And you're going to do it right now. Grant, the drill is everyone comes back with us. I'm staying, John. You're injured. I'm sorry. Call my family. Tell them that we're okay. That we'll be home soon. We got to get George back to the hospital. If you don't make it up on the first try, give us a call. He hands Grant his radio, and Grant and JL walk towards her plane. In the chopper. Trilobites. My trilobites. Where's my fossils? Take it easy, sir. You're delirious. No, I'm not. I want my fossils. The tech chuckles and walks away. Kerr picks up the chopper's radio. Skipper, patch me through to Doc Roberts' house at Danger Bay. The chopper heads back to the station. Grant and JL watch it go. Okay, let's get started. JL nods tentatively, and they head to the plane. Meanwhile, Nicole hangs up the phone and turns to Jonah and Grace. Okay, that's my go, George. Says hey. the helicopter, and that's the University yeah. Health yeah. Hospital. Yeah. Come on, come on. Hey, it's mine. It's mine. <laughs> they hug each other and jump up and down. The chopper flies over the lake and mountains. Scaring off some geese, the float plane slowly moves across the lake. JL nervously maneuvers the plane across the water. She tightly grips the control stick. and finally lifts the plane into the air. The plane soars, and Grant grins at her. I knew you could do it. <laughs> JL gives Grant a peck on the cheek and grins. The plane flies toward home. This program has been described by the Accessible Channel. Executive producer, Paul Saltzman. Executive script consultant, John T. Dugan. Supervising producer, John M. Eckert. Post-production producer, Paul Quigley. Guest cast, Grace, Sheila Moore. Search master, Alvin Lee Sanders. Rookie, Peter Bibby. Winchman, Al Richards. Sartek 2, David Clark. Sartek 1, David Marr. Corporal, James McLarkey. Lieutenant, Brian Ralston. Executive in charge of production for the CBC, Nada Harcourt. Music composed and conducted by Don Gillis. Music supervised by David Green. Produced by Danger Bay Productions, Incorporated. Copyright 1985.